Hey there, thanks for joining me for this recommended daily activity. Today we're working on our hips. Let's get started with a notorious exercise, the bathtub walk or bathtub march. So we're getting into a bathtub and out of a bathtub. It can be a minimal bathtub if you need. We could walk, call it a walk-in shower. It could be very light in your raise of your foot long as you raise your toes. Don't leave those toes hanging or dangling. We've got to get those knees to come up. More importantly, the toes to raise with the knees. Whatever you need to do with your arms and hands is fine to maintain your center of balance because this is a little bit of dynamic balance. It's a lot of strength and mobility through the hips. We're doing this for about a minute here, so it's going to start to activate and maybe even fatigue those hips. So oh, you notice my balance right there was a little wonky. These hips involve the biggest muscle groups in your body, and so they tend to increase your oxygen demand quite a bit. It's about a minute there. Okay, we're going to move into a different type of march called the hacky sack march. I like to use my arms and hands a little bit here just to give me a little more balance. Whenever those uh, feet and lower legs and core and everything up the chain needs to stabilize, get your hands and arms involved. Your hands and arms help to make counter movements and corrections when you become unstable. So, so the hacky sack is if you're kicking a soccer ball or kicking a hacky sack side to side. You can have some fun with it. If you know these movements, you can do all kinds of stuff. Across the room, you can be moving around, you can make a little circular motion like I'm doing. Mix it up, have some fun. Minimally, we're going to get those hips activated. We're going to give them a good stretch as well as a good squeeze in a lot of these. Take them through some good range of motion and develop better blood flow, elasticity, good posture, good strength. Now is our split squat hold. Speaking of strength, this is going to be a challenge one. We're going to split this one up into a half and half and do it twice. So a half a minute in a split stance or a split squat. Okay, so your split stance comes from posture and steps directly back wherever you need to start. Could be right there, could even be here if you need balance and stability. Stability is your base for strength. If you're ready for a little bit more, step it back and dip into it. Dipping down the back of the knee straight down. We don't dip the front knee forward. So pretend there's a pane of glass right here in front of your nose all the way down. You don't want to bump your nose going forward. So if you haven't started this, let's begin. If you have, good job. It counts. Minimally, make sure that you stay as active as you can through your butt and your core. Yeah, your thighs are definitely going to be working. And you can see as I stabilize and correct and twitch and react. My feet are active too, but I need to make sure we're not arching our back when we do this position. Let's switch sides. Roughly 30 seconds if you were doing it with me. If you were doing it on your own, you could have been there for a long time. Make sure you keep it balanced. What I like to do is coach folks really the right position before we drop into any kind of hold or load. Obviously, as you get stronger, you can get lower. But as you do so, you also have to learn how to control the front leg. We talked about the back knee, and you feel a lot of pressure and strength in the back leg. The front leg, you got to push actively, mindfully, and use your mind-to-body connections, and squeeze that heel and bottom of your front foot into the floor. It'll activate that front leg, and you'll support the rest of the exercise. i got three seconds left. What do you think? Shaking like a leaf on a tree. Ooh. Okay, leaning side leg raise now. Another 
um, strength based exercise. So we're going to use that leaning position. So whatever kind of wall or countertop or table you have nearby, you're going to lean into it lightly. It doesn't have to be a big lean, just a light lean enough that you have some pressure in that leaning shoulder. Hopefully you don't have shoulder issues. If you do, don't flare it too high or your shoulder doesn't like that. So keep the hand a little lower, lean, and do a side raise. Side raise of the outside leg, keeping your toes forward. Don't let those toes turn up toward the ceiling. Minimize your range of motion, squeeze at the top, slowly lower. Squeeze at the top, slowly lower. As we go straight into that side raise, we're looking for a squeeze right above the ball and socket joint. It's not a big range of motion. Our body doesn't have that big a range of motion before we need to rotate our toes up, but I don't want you to do that right now. We're leaning into this side raise. It's not going to be easy on either side. You should be feeling that this inside leg is also working. You know what I just remembered? That we didn't do the other half of our split squats. Oh man, I have to come back to that. Keep that side leg raise going. Not easy. Let's pause there. Switch sides. Lean into it. Find a good postural position. Always keeping your belly tucked here. Another thing that's going to happen, a lot of people are going to end up arching at the lower back. As they get tired in these side hip muscles, which are much smaller and less utilized than our lower back and glute muscles, and it's going to want to cheat. Definitely less utilizing those hip flexors because a lot of people are going to be here. Nope. Totally different than lifting with those toes straight ahead. Keep them straight ahead. But also, engaged and tight through that core. Don't want to sacrifice back health by lifting through your butt cheeks instead of those side hip muscles. Keep it going. Not easy. Try to get that nice squeeze and hold. Woo wee, that's a burn. Okay, we're gonna go into a squat and with a press apart at the knees for a little bit of a stretch. So I want you to take a wider squat, and as wide as you can comfortably. Remember, we're gonna keep our suck and tuck at the top, so we're engaged nice and tight. We're gonna squat down, sitting back through the heels, back through the hips, and leaning into our hands, tight through our shoulders and our uh, underarms, keeping your shoulders strong. We get a little opening of the knees, and we can come back up out of it and do that again for a few more times. Sit down into it. Try to find a bracing through your shoulders so that your spine and your hips all just kind of sink below it. So the strength is right up here in your shoulders. We're sitting into those hands, wedging the knees apart. And you kind of roll into the outer edge of your feet if you can. That opening of the ankle, tibia, knee, leg, hip, joint there, in through the pelvis, and through a strong torso is what we're looking for. A big stretch in the groin, maybe even a bit of decompression in your spine. Feeling of a lengthening and stretch through the torso muscles just a little bit, but really especially through that front pelvic floor and through the groin. Let's do this one as our last one. Try to sit a little deeper. Take a couple deep breaths here. out of it nice and safe and strong and feeling good for the day. Congratulations, another one in the book.